I mean, Joe Biden, all these contests in all these states that we've surveyed now uh, nine times are pretty close. Um, Trump has a bigger advantage in, in Pennsylvania. You know, Joe Biden has a bigger advantage in Wisconsin. But a lot of these races are really tight. Um, you know, we survey voters, thousands of voters every day, day nationally, and we haven't seen much of a movement since the debate. Uh, my takeaway from that is a lot of this stuff is already baked in about Joe Biden. I mean, for the last few years, Republicans have worked really hard to inundate this he's too old message. A lot of Voters thought that the only thing that seems different this time is elites in Washington are starting to take notice. Well, that's for sure. And when lawmakers get back, they could make a lot of noise for Joe Biden here. Um, the headline to start at the top, Eli, 47 percent Donald Trump, 45 for Joe Biden. That's when we consolidate the numbers from the states. But when you look under the hood a little bit, and if you're with us on Bloomberg TV, you can see our map Joe Biden leads Trump in Michigan and Wisconsin. Very important when we consider the blue wall here. He's so far, though, farthest behind in the critical state of Pennsylvania. Is that the most important thing for Joe Biden to turn around right now? Oh, for sure. I mean, if he gets Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, he probably wins re-election. I think that's why you're seeing him spend so much time over the weekend in Pennsylvania. He, he was once referred to as the state's third center. That's clearly an important state for him. And Donald Trump knows that, too. I think we're going to see the former president spend a lot of time and energy there. Um, you know, Joe Biden has a lot of work to do in Pennsylvania right now. Um, that's a state that's been a challenge for Democrats to some extent. And Joe Biden brought it back for them. Um, I think showing up is going to help. Uh, to try to alleviate some of these concerns. I mean, Pennsylvania was one of the states where voters were most likely to have tuned in to all of the debate, which means they noticed this more than voters in other swing states may have. And so he's going to have to spend some time there to try to uh, bring back some of these growing concerns uh, among voters there that are showing up um, and also uh, try to push back on Donald Trump. I mean, every, I think every time I've been on here, I've said Joe Biden's case for re-election is going to be to remind voters why they didn't like Donald Trump four years ago. Mm -hmm. And in this moment where his age has been questioned in its most dramatic way possible, we've seen that. I mean, he called Donald Trump a liar multiple times this morning when he called in to, to morning sure TV. He's clearly trying to revive a lot of these fears that voters had about Donald Trump. Well, we write uh, right in our piece here, Eli, this poll could turn out to be a statistical outlier. It does run counter to the national polls that we've seen since the debate. And so that's why it's pretty big news. That's why the campaign is highlighting it. How do you square well, the big, difference between yeah. what we're seeing in the swing states and nationally? Well, first of all, we have not seen a lot of numbers since the debate from the swing states. I think this is the first comprehensive look at these seven swing states since yes. the, the late June debate. Um, I, what we're seeing in our national tracking that we do every day among thousands of voters, I just got data back today from 10,000 voters. Joe Biden, Donald Trump is up by two points. The race was tied before the debate. Um, this is this. If we look at the data we're seeing, this is not having a massive impact on the electorate. A lot of voters already thought he shouldn't be running for president. Um, that's a different discussion than who are you going to vote for. Um, Barack Obama in 2016 at the White House Correspondents' Center, whenever Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were both highly disliked, had this whole riff that you get to choose between <laughs> chicken and steak. And that's kind of the choice voters have right now as the race stands today. I'm curious how people thought about or felt about Donald Trump's performance. I know they think he won the debate. Do we have... Any other insights into what people saw from Donald Trump, who, of course, was recorded by CNN to have lied 30 times over the course of 90 minutes? Well, I mean, just as we saw some small declines in the shares of voters who saw Donald, uh, Joe Biden as mentally fit or in good health, we saw a bit of an increase in the share who saw Donald Trump as dangerous. I mean, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about in February. Um, is our voters going to be more concerned about somebody who they think is too old or somebody they think is too dangerous? 
And right now, those seem to be weighing on the minds of a lot of these states, just given how close these contests are. I mean, one thing to remember is we feel this survey after his conviction in New York and after this Supreme Court immunity ruling. And that is something that I think has really fired up Democrats and concerned independent voters um, nationally and at the swing states. I mean, this is the first time in our swing state survey where we've seen independent Donald Trump and Joe Biden tied among independent voters. Look, voters are complicated yeah. people. There's a lot of things weighing on their minds. And it's not just Joe Biden's age that they're concerned about. Spending time with Eli Yokely at Morning Consult, which of course runs our Bloomberg News Swing State poll with us every month. And the double haters are popping off the page to me here, Eli. If there's something Joe Biden really needs to worry about, large majorities of undecided voters and so-called double haters say the president should step aside. That's a number that could haunt him as he continues this public exercise in proving people that he has the mental acuity to do this. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of people think Donald Trump should step aside too from this contest. I mean, the American people are not happy with the two major party candidates they're facing today. I mean, Joe Biden and Donald Trump as of today are equally unpopular among the electorate. Clearly, the American people are not happy with the choices they have. But we're about to see in Milwaukee next week and probably in Chicago um, next month, these two guys elevated if things stay the way they are today. Um, that This is the election voters have. And so those double haters are going to matter a lot. And that's why uh, I think you're seeing the president, the incumbent president, lean into a lot of these attacks on Donald Trump. Reality check. In our remaining moment, Eli, debates usually don't decide races, do they? They do not. They neither do states of the union. I mean, that's where we saw Joe Biden get some of his better right. numbers when this race solidified. But this is not a normal year as we're all seeing it.